Farmer Hans rubbed his eyes. Was he seeing that right? Everywhere as far as he could see, he saw strange white objects on his farmland. When he checked a few days ago, everything was fine. When he got closer, he realized the white objects were in fact hundreds of eggs. Not much later, he had heard a strange but familiar noise. Hans could not believe his eyes and immediately drove back to his home to wake up his wife, Bonnie, and his two daughters, Mary and Giselle. They all rushed outside together and all of the girls were stunned by what they saw. With tears in her eyes, Bonnie said to her husband, Is this what I think it is? The field was dead and the corn was gone. Instead, there were eggs scattered all over the place. It looked like they were almost ready to hatch. But Hans got up on his tractor and was about to destroy all of them when his girls intervened. They jumped in front of the tractor and refused to move. They didn't understand how their father could be so heartless and destroy a living thing like that. To calm down his girls, Hans suggested something else completely shocked them. But what had Hans suggested? And why did he burst into tears when they finally hatched? A farmer's life is full of routines. They wake up before the sun rises and start their work. Their days are filled with hard labor, but it is also very rewarding. Being a farmer had always been Hans' dream. And now that he had made it a reality, nothing could go wrong, or so he thought. Hans has two daughters, Mary and Giselle, with his wife Bonnie. They live on a farm where they grow vegetables like corn and herd sheep. It is a simple life, but it isn't often that something out of the ordinary happens. So you can imagine the shock on Hans's face when he woke up this morning. Hans woke up as normal and put on his overalls. He always lets his wife sleep a little longer than he does. He made breakfast for the family so they could eat as soon as they woke up and was about to go feed his animals when Hans got interrupted by something strange. As Hans stood in the kitchen, he heard a strange noise coming in from the outside. It was still dark, so he couldn't see where it came from, but he had never heard anything like it before. It gave him a strange feeling. It stood in the kitchen, listening to the sound, when he heard something terrified him. His wife Bonnie, she sneaked up behind him and tapped him on the shoulder. This scared Hans half to death, and he let out a little high-pitched scream. They laughed about it, but Hans wasn't happy. He was about to go outside to see what the noise was about, but now it was gone. All of a sudden, his two daughters ran downstairs as well and frantically looked around them. Where is mom? Is she alright? We heard her scream. Hans looked at his wife and they smiled. It seemed like it was about to be a normal day, but they didn't know what was happening outside. When everyone finished their breakfast, it was finally time for Hans to step outside and feed his animals. He had his bucket of food ready and walked to the chicken's coop. His chickens acted differently than usual. They ran around the coop and it seemed like they were scared of something. But what? Hans then noticed something else. One chicken was missing from the coop. Where could he be? He walked around the cage but stopped when he saw a little pile of feathers lying on the ground. Oh no, he thought. This can't be good. Hans knew exactly what this meant. He ran inside to get a towel and a box and put the deceased chicken in there. How could it have died so suddenly? There was nothing wrong with this chicken yesterday and how did it get out of the coop? He continued his round and walked to the pigs. They were louder than usual. What was going on here? Hans thought to himself. He fed the pigs and they were quiet again for a brief minute. But Hans knew there was something strange going on and he would soon find out what it was. Then suddenly he heard the strange sound again. He listened carefully but couldn't place where it came from. It couldn't be far because he could hear it clearly. It wasn't like something he had ever heard before. It almost sounded animal-like. But what kind of an animal could it be? After feeding all his animals, he went into the barn to get his tractor ready. He had to harvest the fields today, starting with the corn. So he hooked the machine to his tractor and opened the barn doors, unknowing about what was happening under his tractor. He was about to drive away when he heard a loud scream. It was Mary. Dad, stop! There is something on the ground there. She looked as if she had seen a ghost. Mary pointed towards the tractor's wheels, and as soon as Hans saw it, he jumped off. A little sick kitten was on the ground in front of one of the tractor's wheels. Hans would have run over the poor animal if Mary hadn't come outside. The little kitten had strange bleeding marks on its ears and was obviously malnourished. Mary immediately offered to care for the animal, and Hans agreed. Typically, Hans's days were on automatic pilot and almost dull, but today one thing happened after the other, and he could barely keep track of his round. He had never seen marks like that before in an animal. It was probably from one of his burned cats, but they were usually very friendly. 
Before he could even wrap his head around what was happening, his other daughter Giselle came running outside the house. Daddy, you gotta look at the cornfield, she screamed. Yes, Giselle, I'm on my way. Hans sighed, but he was up for a big surprise. Hans got back up on his tractor and drove to the field. It was right across from his home, so it wasn't far. He noticed small white dots in the distance, but didn't think much of it until he came closer. What in the world was that? He got off his tractor and Giselle ran towards him. She stood next to him and together they looked in silence at the field. What is that, Dad? Giselle whispered and asked her father. Hans wished he could answer her, but he was just as baffled as her. Mary and Bonnie also came running towards the field and their mouths fell open when they arrived. Eggs? Bonnie said, stunned. How is that possible? She looked at her husband who was just as stunned as her. He was about to answer her when he heard the strange, familiar sound again. Hans hears the same sound he has been hearing all morning. It came from the field all this time. He crouched down and held his head closer to one of the eggs. Then he jumped up, startled. There is something inside. Mary and Giselle looked at the egg and crouched down as well, listening closely. It looked like the eggs were almost ready to hatch, but Hans wanted to get rid of them. So he got up on his tractor until his girls intervened. They jumped in front of the tractor and refused to move. Hans suggested something else to calm the girls down. Well, girls, the crops aren't savable anymore, but maybe we can still save the eggs, Hans said. The girls' faces lit up and they jumped in the air with joy. But they had to figure out how to keep all the eggs warm at once. There were about 20 eggs scattered around the field. Hans was scared something would happen to the eggs if they moved them. So, he was thinking of a different idea. How could he move those eggs without cracking them? He suggested that they put a large black tarp over the eggs. This way they keep it dry if it starts to rain and the tarp would keep them warm under the sun. The girls were ecstatic about his plan and ran back to the barn to look for a tarp. But Bonnie wasn't as enthusiastic as the girls. She looked worryingly at all the eggs and wondered from what animal they came from and how did they get here? What if they were snake eggs? She didn't want to harm any animals since Bonnie was against harming animals, especially harmless creatures. Hans noticed his wife's worries and wrapped an arm around her. It's all right, dear. They look like chicken eggs to me. You don't have to worry. His words were meant to be reassuring, but they gave Bonnie even more questions. Not long after their daughter returning with the large black tarp, together they stretched the tarp over the eggs and put rocks on the sides to secure it. So, Hans said, back to work. But his daughters were inseparable from the eggs. They stayed with them all day as Hans finished his rounds. At the end of the day, Hans had to pry his girls inside with the promise of a dessert. The following morning, Hans woke up to a weird noise, but it wasn't the same as yesterday. This time it sounded more like giggles. Within a second, Hans knew it was it. He shot up. He ran towards the window and looked at the field. You've got to be kidding me. His thoughts turned out to be true. His girl had woken up before him and went to the eggs. It's four in the morning, Hans said loudly, waking his wife. What's going on, hon? She asked, but then she heard the giggles. Bonnie hurried out of the bed and ran downstairs. She jumped in her boots and robe. I knew these eggs were bad news, but this is not how we raised our girls. Bonnie mumbled, glaring at Hans. Bonnie just hoped nothing bad happens to those eggs. Maybe the girls were being reckless. Mary and Giselle's smiles faded as they looked at their angry mom approaching. It was still quite dark outside, so they knew they had done something bad. But they just had a look at the eggs. They were their babies. Something strange was about those eggs. But as soon as Bonnie saw what her girls had been doing, her anger turned into awe. Giselle and Mary brought straw and hay from the barn to the eggs and built a little nest around each of them. This was not something Bonnie would expect from her girls. This melted Bonnie's heart. And instead of yelling, she praised her daughters for taking such good care of the eggs. They'll be excellent farmers one day, Hans winked at his wife. Especially Hans could not be prouder of his girls, but this moment of happiness turned quickly after hearing a loud crack. Then suddenly they heard a loud crack. The girls jumped up in shock, thinking they had smashed one of them, but it was something else. They have taken such good care of those eggs, so they all thought something would go out of the egg. Giselle looked closely at one of the eggs and noticed a big crack in its shell. She screamed with joy and held up for Mary to see. Look, Mary, it's almost time. But Mary reacted in a whole different way, which no one understood. No one expected the way Mary would react. Instead of being happy, she got really sad and started crying. 
She didn't want her eggs to break. She was too little to understand what was really happening. So her mother tried to explain everything in the best way possible. Bonnie tried to explain it, but it was in vain. So she took Mary inside to care for the sick little kitten instead. It had been two days since they found the eggs. The tarp had done a terrific job of keeping the eggs safe from the weather and predators. More eggs started to crack and it would be any minute until they began hatching. On the fourth day, it was finally time. Hans went to check on the eggs when he noticed one was already empty. He frantically looked around him, but the baby was nowhere to be found. He called the girls over and they waited for the other eggs to hatch together. The wait felt longer than expected and the girls almost lost their patience when finally two more eggs started to move. They cracked and shifted. Slowly but surely a little animal came out. They have never seen anything like this before. Hans couldn't believe his eyes. Out of all the animals, he never imagined these to come out of the eggs. He yelled for his wife to come quickly but couldn't hold his emotions any longer. He couldn't help himself and started to cry. He burst out crying when his wife arrived. She asked what was wrong. Then he pointed down at the animals. Bonnie immediately knew what was going on and comforted her husband. However, she was also very emotional about seeing what came out of those eggs. The animals were little baby peacocks. Hans always cared for peacocks when he was little. He even had his own peacock, who was his best friend. After it died, he never cared for a peacock again until now. It seemed like a miracle, but this is not everything. Hans couldn't stand giving the animals away and wanted to keep them all, but Bonnie disagreed. There wasn't enough room for their farm for 20 peacocks, so they decided to do something else instead. That was the only option and Hans knew it. Bonnie and Hans kept two peacocks on their own farm and brought the other 18 animals to a peacock sanctuary. There, they had all the freedom they deserved and would get the best care, and the girls also loved caring for the peacock.